In 2010, Nine Inch Nails fans witnessed the musical evolution of the band's pioneering mastermind, Trent Reznor. After 20 years of creating hit albums of industrial rock music like Pretty Hate Machine and The Downward Spiral, Reznor and bandmate Atticus Ross took their first steps on the beginning of an audacious new journey into film scores. Now, as the duo begins their second decade of film scoring, we take a look back at a body of work that has already eclipsed Nine Inch Nails in size. These are the scores of Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. Instrumental music has been part of the Nine Inch Nails mythology since almost the very beginning. The first instrumental tracks from Trent Reznor appeared on The Broken EP, the 1992 follow-up to the debut album Pretty Hate Machine. From then on, instrumental pieces have been interspersed throughout the Nine Inch Nails discography, most notably on Ghosts 1-4, through 4, a completely instrumental double album in 2008 that truly foreshadowed what was to come. Meanwhile, Reznor's music was also finding its way into new mediums. In 1996, he contributed background music for the hit video game Quake. Nine Inch Nails also contributed songs to several movie soundtracks, including The Crow, Lara Croft Tomb Raider, Natural Born Killers, and Lost Highway. It was on those last two projects that Trent Reznor began to expand his involvement in the filmmaking process. In addition to contributing multiple songs to the film, Reznor also produced the entire soundtrack for 1994's Natural Born Killers. In 1997, he also produced the Lost Highway soundtrack, contributing both a new Nine Inch Nails song and two instrumental pieces credited just to Trent Reznor. Jump cut now to the year 2010. Acclaimed director David Fincher approached Trent Reznor to create the score for his new film, The Social Network. Reznor was hesitant at first, but agreed to take on the challenge after reading Aaron Sorkin's script. Bringing on Nine Inch Nails member Atticus Ross to co-write on the project would be the beginning of a soon-to-be legendary musical partnership. The Reznor-Ross score for The Social Network was a wild success, winning both the Golden Globe and the Oscar for Best Original Score. For their follow-up, they re-teamed with David Fincher to create the score for his adaptation of the international best-selling novel, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. In addition to the nearly three hours of score music for the film, they also recorded a cover of Led Zeppelin's Immigrant Song for the soundtrack, featuring Karen O oh on vocals. Taking a break from scoring, the duo reassembled Nine Inch Nails to record and release 2013's Hesitation Marks, the band's first album in five years. During this time, Trent Reznor also contributed a song for Dave Grohl's documentary film, Sound City. Then in 2014, Reznor and Ross returned to the movies once more to score Gone Girl, their third collaboration with David Fincher. But suddenly, David Fincher wasn't the only filmmaker looking to work with Trent and Atticus. Over the next six years, their scoring output for both film and television would practically explode. In 2016, the duo worked on no less than three projects. Juno was an instrumental piece composed for a short film from NASA called Visions of Harmony, celebrating the success of the Juno-Jupiter mission. Planetary concerns were also at the heart of Before the Flood, a documentary about climate change on Earth, which Reznor and Ross scored along with several guest artists. Reznor also contributed vocals to one song for the film, a first for the duo in a non-Nine Inch Nails setting. The pair then wrapped up 2016 with the score for Patriot's Day, a thriller about the bombing at the Boston Marathon. In 2017, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross took their musical talents to television for the first time, to provide the score for legendary documentary filmmaker Ken Burns' PBS series, The Vietnam War. In addition to new compositions, Reznor and Ross also contributed tracks from previous scores as well as Nine Inch Nails instrumentals. Speaking of Nine Inch Nails, it was during this same time period that the band released the first two EPs in a trilogy, with Not the Actual Events in 2016 and Add Violence in 2017. The trilogy concluded with Bad Witch in 2018, a very busy year for Trent and Atticus. TV documentary series The Fourth Estate featured an original Reznor-Ross opening credits theme. 
Meanwhile, the pair also contributed music to actor Jonah Hill's directorial debut for the independent film Mid-90s. Their most high-profile work of the year, though, would be providing the score for the hit Netflix original film Bird Box. In 2019, Reznor and Ross detoured once more into independent film scoring for the film Waves. Then came another high-profile TV project. When HBO announced they were developing a new series based on the groundbreaking DC Comics series Watchmen, Trent and Atticus immediately asked to take part. As fans of the original comics, they jumped at the chance to contribute to the new project. The limited series spawned a three-volume soundtrack release of their original music and ended up snagging the duo their first Emmy Award. Now ten years into their cinematic endeavor, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross were about to take on what would certainly be their most high-profile and unexpected project ever. Disney Pixar's animated family film Soul was set to be one of the major summer movies of 2020, with Reznor and Ross providing the score. But when the pandemic hit, most movie releases for the year were put on pause. As a result, Trent and Atticus's Disney debut moved to the small screen, with Soul making its streaming debut on Disney Plus on Christmas Day 2020. That same month saw Reznor and Ross returning to their cinematic roots, reuniting with David Fincher for the fourth time. Mank tells the story of legendary screenwriter Herman Mankiewicz and the production of Orson Welles' classic film, Citizen Kane. In the spirit of the film's golden age setting, Trent and Atticus set aside their synths in favor of recording the score with instruments that would be more authentic to the period. The stark contrast of that highly organic approach compared with their simultaneously released electronic score for Disney's Soul did not go unnoticed. Reznor and Ross earned Golden Globe and Oscar nominations for both Mank and Soul, ultimately winning trophies in both races for Soul. Now, as Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross begin their second decade in the world of cinema, what surprises await the audience, many of whom will be completely unaware these movie maestros once unleashed Pretty Hate Machine and the downward spiral upon the world. Grab your popcorn, film fans. The next show is about to begin. Thanks for watching this special presentation on Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, plus check out some of these other videos you might also enjoy. And of course, be sure to click subscribe, because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.